<laughs> For my A2 advanced portfolio, I would like to make a music documentary. In most instances, music documentaries are released as part of a musician's promotional pack for a new release, these days known as a digipack. This is a good example of a digipack. This is McFly's Radioactive album. What the band and record label chose to do with this is to release a CD with a documentary, so they work in synergy together. With this, fans get the CD in a digipack style. As you can see, it opens up into three modules. The first module contains a Perth card, which could be used for the fans' walls, it could be stuck on there to promote it that way. It also contains tour information, which is another useful bit of information for fans and also shows another good use of Synergy, releasing all these items together. There is also the album's booklet. This contains lyrics to the songs and also images of the band that are exclusive to this record. If we just put these back into the first model. If you move along you then get the CD, which is the album Radioactive. The track list for this is seen on the back of the digipack at the top. So this is the release that the fans are actually after. McFly have got clever with this by also releasing a DVD as an extra incentive for buying this Jaluk style of album. However this also gives fans exclusive footage of the making of the album. Again, if we look at the track list on the back, it shows the parts of the DVD, which is a documentary. After watching both of these parts, it's clear that these were filmed in a cinema verite style of filming, and also shows um, a fly on the wall style documentary. This type of film is called a video diary, which is exactly what these boys are doing here. In this scenario, it is the record label that produces the documentary, employing an external film crew to capture the musician in question in the best possible light. That said, typical television channels such as the BBC and Channel 4 also make music documentaries, although these are usually more informative and educational rather than a fly on the wall reality style, focusing on one band. For example, in the past, the BBC have delivered programmes called What the World is Waiting For and Blank Generation, looking at music scenes Indian and punk respectively, which is therefore classed as educational because they are looking at cultural change. This requirement is due to the licensing fee of the BBC, to which they are obliged to create such programming, whereas Channel 4 holds the same requirement but has a more leeway with experimental films because they are subsidised financially. As well as the more educational and informative music documentaries, there are also those which involve a section of vintage clips, compiled and televised around the time of an event's anniversary, such as Glastonbury at 40, Avalon to Jay-Z, which was televised prior to the 40th Glastonbury Festival earlier this year. The documentary involved a piece of footage representing each letter of the alphabet, delivering to the audience a reminiscent documentary that they can relate to. In terms of industry status, Channel 4 is known as an independent company covering just Britain, whilst the BBC is named the largest conglomerate in Britain as it covers a much larger area, with its spin-off arm BBC Worldwide, distributing DVDs worldwide as well as other print publications. An essential part of institutions is advertising and distribution. Like films, all television industries delivering music documentaries will promote them using several means. Top of the list is print advertising, such as getting a full page, possibly a double page advert in a music magazine or similar publication. A3 posters pasters around venues and advertising boards, as well as asking respected journalists to review the release and print the article in the publication they work for, or other useful ways of marketing. This day and age also involves web marketing, which could be a sidebar animated or video advert on the channel's website or video sharing sites like YouTube. Sponsored adverts on the social networking sites like Facebook and also getting reviews of the documentary onto the music blogosphere are other useful ways of promoting it. More marketing tips include promoting the release on the musician's social networking page such as Twitter or MySpace or television releases on the channel's social networking page. It is also useful 
to create add-ons for social networking sites such as the Twiven which is used on Twitter. This is a small image that can be added to a fan's avatar to show their support for the release. Obviously a key marketing element for televised documentaries is a moving informational on the channel the documentary is to be shown on, as well as music channels. In the creation of recent technologies such as iPhones, the channel or record label may release an app relating to the release to appeal to the more technologically advanced members of the audience. Several elements of this marketing outline work in synergy, promoting the documentary via different mediums, 